What's up, awesome humans out in the globe? Hey, so let's talk about impossibility and inevitability, okay? Because a lot of people ask the question, like, is my manifestation impossible or can it be done? Is it, is it inevitable that I'm not going to get what I want? But there's two types of inevitability, and this is extremely important to understand, okay? So, there's inevitability that's based on the past, okay? So this is how most people live their lives, all right? Um, and even if you're aware of the law, there's a tendency that you still might live your life in basically a permanent state of inevitability. So what do I mean? Well, let's use an example, okay? So if you, let's say, were a baseball player, right? And every time you threw a curveball, right, you ended up striking out the batter, whatever it is, okay? Are you with me so far? So what's going to happen though is not only you, but others around you might think, oh, so every time he does this, that happens, right? So the cause is not that he's skilled. The cause isn't that he has probably spent years trying to get good at his particular role in the game. It's just that, oh, he did this particular behavior, which was throwing a curveball, and every single time, man, it's like magic, right? That's inevitability, where we start making up rules in our head and saying, well, this is the way things are because this. So then you might have a bad experience and saying, ah, because my parents rejected me at such a young age, it's inevitable that everybody else is going to, right? And so if you've listened to any of my other YouTubes, I talk about a schema. And so a schema is from the work of Jean Piaget. Yes, French, but not French fries. Very big difference. I learned that for myself. So what happens is that by the ages of five to eight, we assimilate new information. We accept new things about the world. We accept it through language. We accept it through our parents. We accept it through our church. We accept it through fill in the blank, right? And so we end up understanding the world a certain way. So then we think, okay, well, that's inevitable, right? If I press the button at the stoplight, it's supposed to make sure that it says there's a green little man that I can walk across the street, right? That's inevitable, do you, do you hear the language? So you've, you've set up a mental ecosystem of rules that are meant to go certain ways. That's the key word. They're meant to do that way, right? Or they're meant to go that way. I will learn to speak English one day. But what happens is that you live by these rules. So that schema, that map, that mental map of the world is now your way of being. Not just a rule book, but a way of being in the world. And remember, manifestation is about being, not getting. Okay, it's about becoming, not attaining. And there's a big difference between that, all right? So inevitability means, oh, I know that, that that was gonna happen. Have you ever like caught yourself saying that? Oh, that was gonna happen. Of course that, that was meant to go that way, right? Of course my boss was gonna fire me. Do you, but do you hear the language? Of course, right? Now, that's why I wanna talk about the tale of two inevitabilities. Oh, you like that, right? Um, like the tale of two cities if you didn't catch that. So, Charles Dickens, by the way, really, really good book. So, all right, the tale of two inevitabilities is it's inevitable that this bad thing's going to happen. But, but what we've done is we've split a binary. So if we've said this is inevitable, that this is going to happen, then that means that there could be another universe where the inevitable of what could go your way has already happened right? And that's in here. That's the other universe. Neville even seems to use the language of trying to understand the imagination as universe jumping, as time jumping, right? Because one, there is no time in here. This is the universe where all is now, okay? And so this is a very, very interesting take on trying to understand what happens when we are trying to create a new form of inevitability. So we have negative inevitability, which is like, okay, yeah, of course that was going to happen, and then it happens a bad way. But then there's positive inevitability, okay? And that's very, very important because positive inevitability will get you to the point where you start believing the impossible is possible, right? Where you actually bring together what was once separated, which is you and your desire, you and your achieved end, you and your house, you and your car, you and your loved one, you and your kids, whatever it is. Because the more that you practice the positive inevitability, the more it becomes inevitable. 
And so, yes, it is a practice. It is something that you have to practice daily and you have to guide and control your thoughts, right? So this is what I wanted to jump on and talk about because really when you think of words like impossible, what you what ends up happening is your brain kicks on your reticular activating system, right? And reticular just means your eyes. So it's actually telling your eyes, hey, this is important to this person. So I'm going to give them the ability to hyper focus on these particular areas. So when you start saying my whatever, my manifestation, my house, my SP not returning, whatever is impossible, right? You've now set up your brain to only look for those things, okay? So that is what you really, really need to begin reversing or revising, right? Or forgiving yourself for doing, okay? Because you need to set up that you are now only the person who looks at things from positive inevitability. Of course, I'm going to get a million dollars. Of course, my SP is going to come back. Of course, I'm going to be rich and affluent and famous. Of course, I'm going to have my own TV show, right? Of course, I'm going to have my own live-in masseuse, that's dangerous if you're married. But what you want to do is you want to create the habit and identity because habits become identities the more you practice them, right? The more that you do this, the more easy it becomes. And so again, going through your day could be as simple as, oh, of course, I'm in a state of feeling fulfilled. Of course, I feel healthy. Of course, health is my birthright. Of course, right? And then fill in the blank. And you use this language. And so my challenge to you and my technique for you today is to begin doing this. And again, like Neville says, you don't need to ask anybody's permission. You could do this while you're talking to somebody. You can do this while you are writing your morning journal. You can do this while you're running and be like, of course I'm healthy. Of course I'm going to win the Olympics. Of course. It doesn't matter. And by the way, start playing with impossibilities, right? Of course I'm going to own my own jet. Pfft, that's so easy, right? And then of course, next time you look at the groceries and you're going to a different grocery store and the prices look higher than, because remember, this is all perception, look higher than what you think you're available. To, of course that's easy to afford. Oh my gosh, that's so cheap, right? And so you begin using the language of the person that you want to become who has the thing that you want, right? So remember, it's all about coming, but you can live in a state of permanent inevitability, dark inevitability, or light inevitability, right? And so one is always going to serve you. Actually, both will serve you. And that's the reality here. Which one are you going to choose? Because it's inevitable that you can live your best life. It's inevitable that you can fulfill all your dreams. It's inevitable that you can fall in love with somebody who appreciates you. It's, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. 